This is Official Nerd Business. Hello Nerd Boys and Girls, welcome back to our programming series. Today we will be taking a look at Euler Problem 29. And we will be using Python 3 to solve it. You can see PyCharm already set up and ready to go for challenge 29. I've created the base template file, which uh, the, the template I always use for all of these solutions, with the title, with two parameters, and we'll get to the parameters in a little bit, and with the description copied in from the uh, Project Euler website. So the challenge today reads, consider all of the integer combinations of a to the power b for a between 2 and 5 inclusive and b between 2 and 5 as well. So here's 2 and 5 on the basis and 2 through 5 on the exponents which gives us this little quad of numbers 4, 9, 16, 25 are all of course all known, uh, well known squares then 8, 27, 64 and 125 for the cube, 16 etc. Um, if they are placed in numerical order with any repeats removed we get the following sequence of 15 distinct terms so we have a 4 up here and an 8 somewhere uh, right there and a 9 16, hey, 16 is in here twice, so that's what they mean with removing the duplicates. We have 25, etc. How many distinct terms are in the sequence generated by a to the power of b for a and b being between 2 and 100? So the little example we get here, uh, we are asked to blow this up up to 100 terms on both the base and the exponent. So yeah, it's uh, nice to have a, uh, a bit of an easy challenge in between all the hard work we've been doing lately. Um, we can of course, the, the challenge simply is to return a to the power b for a in range. We want to start at 2 and we want to run all the way up to lim a. As you can see I have uh, two parameters as I said before. Uh, lim a is uh, the base number a running up from 2 up to this limit and then uh, by default that's 100 and lim b is the exponent b that run up from 2 all the way up to this limit once again that's 100 so if we want to hit all the numbers in this range we need to add one because it's inclusive and the python range object is uh, exclusive of the upper bound by default and let's make this a proper list generator Or list comprehension, I should say. Uh, so this gives us a list of all the exponents, of all the combinations a to the power of b for a and b being in two up to a hundred, up to and including a hundred in this case. Um, but there might be duplicates, so. If we have any type of collection and we cast it to set, it automatically removes the duplicates because in a set every element can must be unique. And now we want to know the length of this. That's the number of terms that are in this. So let's see if we uh, start up mainpy. Let's see if this will work. Twenty nine with both the default parameters. It took us certainly no time whatsoever to get the answer 9183. And this might be a spoiler for you, but if you enter this over at Project Euler, you will get the green check. Well, look at that. Within four minutes, and we have our answer. Is there any other way in which we can reach the same result but without brute forcing a list and uh, and squaring or uh, raising 10,000 numbers to the power of something because basically we are running uh, 100 different values in our base and we are holding that up to 100 different powers each so that's about 10,000 numbers 
and we get a result that's not 10,000, but it's not so far off. It's not um, me personally when I first um, answered this and, and took the time to look at the answer and, and whether or not I was expecting this number, I thought, well, there aren't many numbers, um, there aren't many duplicates when we, when we raise one number uh, to a given power and then raise a completely different number to another power. Um, chances of those numbers generating the same result are very slim. And that got me thinking, what's it what we do when we raise a number to the power? If we have a number uh, a to the power of 4, that's basically just a times uh, to the power, excuse me, uh, a times a times a times a. And this is a result x and how can it be that if we have any other number of if we raise b to the second power for instance why is this almost always not x well we can blow this up one step further if we say that um, uh, what what is a well, basically, A is a list of prime factors multiplied together to give you a number. Every number has a unique way of writing it down in prime factors. So this could be, quite distinctly, this could be uh, 2 times 2 times 3, so have, uh, having the 2 in its space uh, twice. Uh, this will give us another a, a quite distinct different number from this, of course. Um, so if we set A to be any set of prime factors and then start multiplying that and basically we get uh, those same set of prime factors again and uh, we set it to 4 so here we go again and this will result in X and X being uh, nothing more than all of its prime factors to the 4th or This is basically all all the same, right? In um, if we if we do take an example, if we uh, if we actually look at uh, raising uh, six, let's just square it. That's less typing, but the principle say, is, it remains the same. Um, this is basically saying that we want and this is basically uh, the result of this is 36 which has prime factors 2 times 2 is 4 4 times 3 is 12 12 times 3 is 36 maybe to make it even more clear we could put another example in the middle here um, basically what the power is telling us is that we will repeat whatever is raised to a given power n times so in this case it will be repeated twice and you can see that if we remove the square brackets here or the, the parentheses here um, then basically you get the same list of numbers as here, only order slightly different, so change the ordering, that's no biggie. So yeah, that's that's what you do when you raise numbers to a given power. Basically you just put more of their prime factors, you concatenate the prime factors into a given list. So when does one number actually do reach uh, another number, that's when they have the same ratio of prime factors. And what do I mean with that? Well, if we take a look at um, 6, for example, it has a 2 and a 3 in its prime factorization. And if we square that, we get, if we take another number that also has 2s and 3s in its prime factor, um, for instance, 18, which is um, 2 times 3 times 3 again, 9 doubled. Um, then these two won't have any um, 
any further exponents in common because um, every power of 6 will have will basically look like this you will have um, twice this set of uh, prime factors and basically you can see that um, you will have as many twos as you have threes in any next um, any next iteration of this uh, any exponent that we give to this base. Um, but if we do, uh, no matter how high we go, so the ratio of twos to threes is always one to one. However, um, here we see that we have more threes than two. So if we uh, take the first If we raise it to the second power, 18, then we will get um, the prime factors of 2s and 3s in the ratio 1 to 2. So there will never be a number in this range that will have the same amount of prime factors, although the, the factors themselves are uh, the same, they appear in different quantities in its prime factorization, and that will ensure that this string, if we continue, will never hit anything in this string. There will never be the same number of twos and threes in the base of in the prime factorization of any number. Uh, any, any power we raise this to will never have the same... If, even if these are different powers, we will never get the same numbers of twos and threes in and when we fully write out the prime factors of uh, the resulting number. However, if we change this to 36, and you can see that we have the same ratio of prime factors. Now what does this mean? This means that if we um, have any n here, then we will definitely do get um, same amount if uh, if n is equal to 2m then we will get a colliding number so if we say um, we raise 6 to the fourth power and 36 to the second power then you can clearly see uh, that we will get a uh, 1 2 here and 1 2 for the second power 1 2 for the third power and 1 2 for the fourth power and the same goes for the threes and if we now look at uh, we get for the uh, this is now raised to the fourth power now 36 gets raised to the second power and we have uh, 2 and a 2 in its own prime factors and then another 2 and a 2 for the second power and we do the same for threes you can clearly see that we will get the same number for both of these uh, base exponent pairs, 6 to the 4th is the same as 36 to the 2nd because the prime factors match and each unique combination of prime factors will always give you the same number as a result. And here we've constructed basically the same set of prime factors twice. So that's another way of looking at this challenge. When will a base exponent pair hit a... Uh, given combination of prime factors that we've already seen before. Um, for that we first need to find out what numbers will in this range of 2 up to 100 um, what number will spawn new numbers that fall in that range. Um, those are very few in between um, because we are limited to 100 and 10 to the second power already is 100 so nothing above 10 will yield anything that is below our threshold. So we only need to check for the first for the first 10 numbers. Um, and now we want to um, basically we want to find all the numbers that if we raise this, uh, in fact let's call it, let's simply call it base 
and well, the base to any given exponent is less than 100, then this will um, then we will have found our 6 and 36, for instance. Um, and 2, of course, is, um, is going to be a number that we, uh, is simply 2, has prime factor 2. 4 has prime factor 2 and 2. 8 has prime factor 2 and 2 and 2, etc. Every power of 2, and there are a lot of powers of 2 below 100, will be on this list. And I say list, so let's make a list. Um, I'm going to call it watch list. It's numbers that we need to watch out for in the future, and it's going to be a dict, and I will show you why this is a dict in a second. And the keys are going to be um, this combination here, and the uh, value of the dict is going to be how many iterations it's removed. So if we take a look at 6 and 36 again, 6 to the second power is 36. 36 is still within the range, so we are going to do stuff with this uh, later on. Um, but we do need to watch out, we do need to keep in mind that every second power of 36 will already have been discovered in our table for 6. Um, therefore we will uh, add to our dicts, to our watch list, um, that 36. And at this point, uh, and that's a funny thing that we will show in a second, uh, at this point I don't care that it was 6 that generated it. Um, but I am interested in the fact that it is a power of 2, that 36 is a power of 2 of something. More on that in a second. So I will set our exponent to start out at 2. And then I will check if uh, we get a number is less than or equal to 100. We do need to hit 100 itself. So we need to include that in our uh, range here. And now we want to add to this watch list. Apparently we have found... Oh, this jumped in. A watch list. Um, Right, and uh, now there's another funny thing. Uh, we will get, uh, we will check for two, but we will also check for four and for eight, and uh, those values might override what we've already found for two. Uh, but it is important that uh, in this watch list we keep the highest factor of things that we find. So if we found uh, that uh, 16, for instance, is a power of two, but uh, then four comes along and says, no, 16 is a power of four, but it's way less than a power of. Uh, it sets its um, it's exponent to way less than what it was uh, when we were looking at 2. That would give us a wrong result. So here we will put another conditional. If uh, base to the power of exponent Excel to invited Excel If base to the power of exponent uh, already in, or in fact not in the dict, then we can set the watch list value. And otherwise, it's already been set by a smaller base, i.e., with a higher exponent, and we want to keep the highest exponent that we found. There's that, and at the end of this, let's just simply uh, print our watch list to see what number, what numbers we are talking about, how our list now looks. I'm gonna run this file locally. Uh, apparently, I'm not running this method yet. Um, it enters here, so I want to. Uh, let's just make you go over the run method instead of directly calling the attempt and. The run method, whether I call it from the file itself or from our main pi, it doesn't matter. Both will now step into attempt number two. And I have made a slight error in our loop, of course I did. Um, 
This hasn't happened much in, on the videos that I've been making so far, but I am a sheer undefeated king in building infinite loops. Um, in, a, in a for loop you just get your values as an iterator um, and you can't really build infinite loops and something Python is very good at is making whatever looping construct you're thinking of into a for loop. Uh, but here we have a while loop and it checks if uh, this value changes whether or not that makes this bigger than 100. So we do need to change that value otherwise we're going to be here for a while. All right. Yeah, here's our list. So 4 is a number uh, that when we start looking at it, it will have uh, factors that we've already, or base exponent pairs that we've already seen. And it is a distance away of 2 from whatever base number it generated it. Same goes for 8 being uh, 3 away, 16 is 4 away, 35, or 32 is 5 away, 64, 6 away. And then next up is 128, but that doesn't fall within the range below 100. So 9 is uh, what you get when you raise 3, of course, and 27 and 81 are as well. And uh, 25 is the only power of 5 in this list. And 36, power of 6, 49, power of 7. And I was kind of expecting 100 to be in here. Yes, of course I was, but it isn't in here because range is not inclusive. There we go. There's 100. So as you can see, um, this is 7 squared, there's no 8 squared and there's no 9 squared in this list, or wait, they are in this list, 8 squared is 64, but it's already an exponent of 2 itself, and 81 is 9 squared, which is an exponent of 3. Alright, now that we know um, what numbers will generate, will collide with previous numbers, how are we going to handle those collisions? And for that I will need a um, sum counter, or I'll just name it result, and then basically what we've said so far, um, it's very unlikely that when we square one number, or when we raise one number to another number's power, that will generate a number that we've already seen. So basically uh, we can assume that our list of candidate numbers that won't be crossed off by previous meddling with uh, with other numbers, that our candidates list basically is. Uh, or let's just use the list comprehension here. Uh, it's and ranges two up to. Basically, we're still working from uh, our a value here, so the. Uh, in fact, that's not entirely true. Um, I need to set up a loop here for a. And what we're looking at here is um, this b. This will create a list of all the exponents um, but there's something still missing here and that's uh, thinking about when two numbers will hit so if we know for instance that um, 8 has a factor of 3 what does that mean? Hey peeps I'm back unfortunately I had an error with my audio recording so we have missed a bit um, while I was unaware of my audio not recording, I did manage to finish typing up everything. Uh, so let's just walk through it top to bottom. Um, the heart of this solution is in this bit. Um, here we set up a list of 100 numbers. And then we take a look for every Uh, raised number that is um, or not in fact raised for every number that has the same prime factor footprint as we do as the current number does um, but in smaller uh, notation so it has a factor 
It has the same prime factors, they differ only by a given uh, factor over all prime factors. So look at all the smaller siblings that this number has in its prime factor footprint. And for math reasons, raise it by one, otherwise we would get multiplications by zero, which is zero, which is not very interesting in this case. Then raise, basically raise every number to its power and see if we get, end up with the same number of prime factors as any numbers that we have set on this candidate list here. Remove numbers from the candidate list if we do. Now this is a, an elaborate way of removing numbers instead of um, instead of counting something, uh, instead of counting the number of hits that we've um, the number of intersections that we'd have, and that's basically referring back to our uh, Euler problem one, uh, where we were asked to uh, find the multiple uh, mul multiples of three and of five. And you'd get stuck with the multiples of 15, and that's basically what happens here. If we uh, were to count for 8 every number that is already in the powers of 2, and then we'd get to the powers of 4, we would be counting certain numbers uh, twice. And that would muck up our total, that would uh, shortchange us in our total. So instead of counting them, we are removing them, and that's also a way of checking if we've not removed them already. So there's that, um, this will trim down the number of multiples that are unique and what we are left with is a list of multiples and I say multiples but that's the number of prime factor multiples that are unique, guaranteed to be unique and the length of that list, so the number of unique multiples that any number A will uh, or any number base will give us is added to a result, the result is returned and if we run this through our main pie Then we will get the correct result back again. So there it is. It's a way more elaborate way of uh, thinking about this, but I like it better than our brute force attempt because it really forces us to think: well, what what is raising a number to a power, and how can we predict where uh, two numbers will collide? Which is a very rare occasion. It happens in only less than 10% of the numbers we're looking at because we are. Um, um, we are looking at 10,000 numbers and the answer is within 9,000 so there's we are even looking at slightly less than 10,000 numbers so the, the hit percentage is less than 10% um, but where can we find, where can we predict what numbers will will be in that collision, what numbers are in our 10% uh, and I think that our uh, second attempt here does a quite nice job of doing exactly that, looking at what is raising a number to a power, what happens with the prime factors involved, what uh, happens with every uh, number with the same sort of prime factors that we've seen previously and how can we express a way of finding hits and misses in those kinds of lists. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, once again I apologize for the um, missing bit with audio. I've had to cut this video up a little bit to compensate for that. I can recommend you to check out my GitHub with the sources for this uh, particular problem and everything we've seen previously. And I will see you again next time for problem number 30. Thanks for watching this video on Official Nerd Business. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell icon. Did we discuss everything you wanted to hear or did we miss anything? Any topics you want to hear in O&B? Leave your thoughts in the comments. See you next time.